Hi, it's Dr. Rohde. I just wanted to share some facts on the coronavirus. A lot of people have contacted me, others in the community have contacted me. And there's a lot of misinformation that's creating anxiety that's really not necessary. And so I'm going to share some good news. Okay? Compared to the traditional influenza, we really have a low number of cases reported, and we also have reports of recovery starting already, so people recover fairly quickly from the coronavirus. That's all good news in my mind. So what I'm going to ask you to do is just pray for a minute, or meditate, or do something else to clear your mind so you can think rationally about this and make some sense out of what you need to do to protect you and your family's health when everybody is really kind of unsure what we need to do with this. I just want to share some brief numbers to give you some perspective with this, and I think that's important. Um, if you think of the traditional influenza at this time of year, from the Illinois Department of Public Health website, at the end of last week, not this week, there were a total of 22,500 cases of influenza reported. That's a pretty good number of people. Second of all, coronavirus, as of March 14th, which is yesterday, there were only 708 cases under investigation. That means they have symptoms, they're quarantined and tested. Of those 708, there are only 64 people that are confirmed, so a very small number in comparison if you think about that. That, I think, is great news. So this is not a major uh, catastrophe as some people think this is. So as a clinician, I think there are important things you need to do. I think uh, distancing yourself from other people and some isolation is common sense, but use your head when you're doing these things. Um, what can you do? So look for the symptoms. Uh, the coronavirus usually presents with a sore throat, uh, high fever, and trouble breathing. There are other viruses like the influenza. Those show up more with runny nose, with body aches, feeling like you got run over by a truck. Um, a low-grade temperature, and then we also have allergies that are starting to flare up at this time of the year as temperatures are getting warmer outside, and those cause symptoms as well. But the CDC recommends not going to a walk-in clinic or going to the doctor's office or the ER. Call and ask and explain your symptoms, and then you can decide whether you need to go. That actually helps protect you because it keeps you away from other people that are ill, and you could pick up something worse by going there. Obviously, if you're young, like a baby, or if you're over the age of 55, that's a little more worrisome. That's when you need to call and ask so you can get some pertinent information about that. So I put together some suggestions what you and your family members can do to help protect yourselves during this time. One of the first things I recommend is reduce your stress. And one of the simplest things I can recommend for that is turn off your TV and listen to some nice calming music or do something fun with your family now that everybody's home and you have time to do that. Stress increases your cortisol. Cortisol suppresses your immune system. Right now you need a strong, healthy immune system. That's vital. So prayer and meditation are a wonderful way to help reduce stress right now. Sleep is number two. You need seven to eight hours of sleep at night. Your body restores, heals, and recharges at night, and that's what you need to do. Uh, so get to bed by 10 p.m. and get refreshing sleep at night. That's vital. Number three, fresh air, exercise, and sunlight. What do those have to do? Well, getting outside, breathing air, being active boosts your immune system. Sunlight is awesome for vitamin D. Vitamin D helps balance your immune system, and that's what you need right now is help with that. If you're not getting enough sunshine, and I don't know how many of you are in central Illinois if you look out the window today, get some vitamin D at the health food store or at uh, Walmart or Walgreens. I'm sure that's still on the shelf, unlike toilet paper. But start taking 5,000 units a day to start with helping your immune system. Another simple way of getting exercise, a small rebounder trampoline. Just get on it and bounce. That's all you need to do. Five minutes multiple times during the day boosts your white blood cell count and your immunity. It's cheap, simple exercise. Anti-inflammatory whole food diet. When Ann and I were out shopping, the stuff I saw people putting in their carts is killing them. Pizzas, chips, sodas, all those things suppress your immune system. You need healthy fruits, vegetables, and clean organic meats right now to help boost your immune system. That's the vital foods. You need good stuff. Drive past McDonald's, not through McDonald's right now. You need to get good stuff into your system. Uh, vitamin C is important. Fresh fruits, again, with that. Oranges, spinach, strawberries are all wonderful things to add in right now. Get some zinc on board. Pumpkin seeds, nuts, seeds, animal proteins, again, those meats, those help with that. 
Elderberry syrup helps boost your immune system. If you need some, we do have some available in the office, but it helps boost your immune system. Glutathione is your body's primary detoxifier. You need that on board, so if you can pick some of that up, that's good as well. Um, vitamin C helps boost the immune system. Start with 1,000 milligrams twice a day, and in a few days, bump it up to 2,000 milligrams twice a day to kick that up. Um, intermittent fasting. I know people think I'm nuts, but avoiding breakfast in the morning and just eating lunch and dinner. When you're not eating, your body has time to burn off excess calories, and that helps it get rid of those toxins like viruses and bacteria and helps cleanse the system with that. Heat is a wonderful thing. That's why we get a fever. Our body's trying to fix it, which God designed our bodies to do. So don't run to the medicine cabinet and get your Tylenol. Tylenol actually interferes with your glutathione, which we just said is important for immune system function and detoxification. Sweat it out. Let your body do its job. Or put everybody in the car and drive to Florida for a week. If everybody's off school and work, go have some fun. Lay on the beach. Get some heat in. If you don't believe me, look at the CDC map for the influenza. Arizona and Florida are both minimal. The rest of the country where it's colder, they have active influenza virus. Get some sunlight, get some heat, good stuff. If you can't travel to Florida, get in somebody's sauna. Have a party over at their house and enjoy some heat in the sauna. That also helps bake and get rid of those viruses. Great thing to do. Nasal irrigation, get the junk out of your nose and your sinuses. A neti pot or a nasal saline uh, rinse bottle helps wash that stuff out of your system. If you can wash it three or four times a day, those viruses don't even have time to adhere and get into your system. Great idea. And last, this should be really common sense, wash your hands. It's really simple. You should be doing that all the time, especially if you're touching stuff. And don't shake anybody's hands right now. Give them the elbow bump or kick their foot or something like that. Mr. Spock, live long and prosper, however you want to do it, but don't be shaking anybody's hand right now. Those are some simple tips. This is all common sense stuff, but I want you to understand this is good news. This is going to be short-lived, and we can easily manage this. So have some fun. Enjoy this time off of work, and live well.